my talk is pretty uh, self-explanatory, and it's called Sexism in Gaming, a talk by a bearded man way out of his depth. <laughs> First of all, it's, I should point out parenthetically that it's very easy to be a man and criticize sexism on the internet. I know that. Um, this is the year that gaming taught me just how much sexism pisses me off. I wasn't really aware of that until now, so thanks, gaming. Um, when you picture a gamer, uh, you're probably inevitably picturing what game development companies picture. You're picturing one of the following groups. Now, these guys are wearing shoes that have clearly never seen dirt. I mean, this family doesn't exist. Their haircuts are immaculate. They probably sleep in Ikea every night. <laughs> but this is how Nintendo chooses to cater towards gaming. When they picture a gamer, this is who they picture, this weird nuclear family. Now, the gamer you're probably picturing realistically is this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> never get tired of looking at that face. Um, when you deal with sexism on the internet and it's coming in a gaming context, it's usually coming from this guy. Not always, but it's usually coming from this guy. But thankfully, a high rate of scurvy and bed, bed sores ensure they die quite quickly. Now, this guy. I hate the Big Bang Theory. It's an insult to everything I hold dear, and frankly, the, see, everyone's looking at his eyes now, because the eyes, they're like the black eyes of a shark, so I'm just gonna solve, it's gonna be hard to talk without doing this, so. All right. Um, problematically, the game developing communities tends to have, uh, basically, uh, they've, they see these as the atypical gamers, so they cater almost exclusively towards these, uh, these archetypal figures. And the one thing you may have noticed is that there's barely any females in the mix. You see, the game development community has drifted towards that dangerous notion that maleness is the norm. And I would like now to kick that notion straight in the dick, if you would permit me. All right. Yeah, dicks! All right. Uh, so, here we are, part two. How many gamers are women? Now, it's all well and good to say more women are gaming, and they are, but I'd like to give you some statistics. Uh, there was a big survey conducted by the ESA last year, and as of last year, 47% of gamers are women. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It is, it's, it's nice, because what happens now is you start to put this anger in context. When male gamers rail against female gamers, you know, they're not a minority anymore, and they start throwing around terms like girl gamer. You may have heard this online. A girl gamer is a, is a kind of weird term because girl carries with it connotations of uh, vulnerability and innocence and youth, whereas in fact, women, like women are playing video games now. My mom plays video games. Admittedly, I have to bribe her to do so, but she's playing them. Uh, so, what I want to talk about now is part three, Grand Theft Auto V, how I got involved, how much it sold, and what it actually is. Now, like I said before, I was never actively pro-sexism before, but you know how sometimes you form very strong opinions based on just how douchey the opposite of your opinions are? So, when Grand Theft Auto V came out, people started talking very vocally about how sexist video games are in general. And that's now, they, they drove me in the opposite direction, so I'm very grateful for that. But Grand Theft Auto V made a lot of money. Would you like to ha know how much money it made in three days? One... <laughs> now, here, here, just as a quick backstory, I was gonna do the voice and put the finger up in that, but I thought, that's not a current reference, no one wants to hear that, but then I forgot to take this slide out. So the joke's still in there, it's just crapper. Um, <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Grand Theft Auto V is what we call a sandbox game. Uh, Basically, the game environment is like a sandbox, except there's rarely dog poo in it. Um, sometimes there is. But these games boast choice. It's all about choice. You go into these game worlds and you are promised an infinite amount of possibilities. You can choose what to drive and what to wear and who to kill with certain vehicles, but you cannot choose not to be a sexist prick, which is an unfortunate uh, side effect. Let's move on to part four. The GameSpot Review Nightmare Factory. Note, not an actual factory. Um, when a game like this comes out, every gaming publication just m massively invested in getting big, fast, entertaining reviews out the door straight away. And GameSpot, a very fine publication, gave the review to Carolyn Petit. And Carolyn does a seven minute video in which she basically heaps praise upon the game. I've never seen this many compliments in a game review. It's wonderful and it's articulate and it's, it's hitting the mark on every point. And halfway through, Carolyn says, maybe the game's a bit sexist and does a really good number on it and then calls the game politically muddled 
and profoundly misogynistic, a claim that, incidentally, I 100% agree with. And then Carolyn rounds it off by giving it a 9 out of 10, because, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect game, right? Would you like to see how the GameSpot readership responded to this very fair review? This is going to get really depressing, by the way, so just strap this. Did we give the straps to them before? The no, okay. All right. Blaster Man Forever said, You dropped the ball and committed suicide on this one, GameSpot. This is the biggest epic fail game review in the history of video game reviews. Wow, hyperbole much? <laughs> you don't deserve to be dealt with delicately for this. You are clearly reactionary, attention-craving, misled, pretentious, pseudo-liberal asses for putting this woman, raised eyebrow there, up to reviewing this game. The review is biased, narrow, and ultimately laughable for singling out character inconsistencies and misogyny as reasons not to give GTA 5 a 10. <sighs> yeah, well, that's not nice, right? Well, don't worry, it doesn't get worse. I'm kidding, it totally does. <laughs> Boxy is Queen said, all caps, because the developer hates women, so they implant misogynistic themes in the game. Fuck your stupid flag for terrorism! Okay, there's one more, and this is the one that really, really made me angry. Okay, this is what video game journalism is today, because no one gave a shit about how women were portrayed in video games two years ago, but now because more women play video games, it's just one woman, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one, one unfortunate woman. It's suddenly a problem. Terrible review and not objective at all. This person should not be in the position to state her opinions as facts. Fuck GameSpot, now. I had to cut thousands of comments out because these three were the least offensive. What's depressing is they started as, 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 as aggressive attacks on Carolyn for critiquing a game, which is funny, because she's a game critic and that's her job. Then it sort of snowballed into hatred for women, and then, you see that her there? Carolyn Petit is transgendered, and Carolyn received a multitude of actual death threats and a petition online to get her fired. That's kind of an underhanded response, right? So GameSpot, what they did is they did this massive video rebuttal and they literally looked down the camera and said, we are ashamed of you people and we don't want to be affiliated with you anymore. If more game uh, critic publications did this, the world would be a, not a far better place, but a moderately better place. Uh, so now on to part five in which I dip my toe in for MMGN. Also, some reasons as to why GTA 5 is actually objectively sexist. Probably should have put a full stop there instead of an exclamation mark. Now it feels like you're making light of things. Paul, why are you reading this out loud? Stop it, stop it. Seriously, you're doing a TEDx talk. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, amongst other things, I'm a video game critic for a publication called The Vime, but I also write for MMGN. And I played the game, and I agreed with GameSpot, like 100%. And I thought, what's the harm? I'm a dude. I'm safe from criticism. What an idiotic thought to inhabit my actual idiot head. <laughs> so I wrote a piece in which I gently suggested the game might be sexist, and I copped swathes of abuse. And again, nothing compared to what women who were writing about the topic far better than I was, incidentally, copped. And... At this point, we've gone, yeah, the game's sexist. But let's look at the game, why the game is actually sexist academically. First up, reason one, three male leads. Now, in my mind, and I'm aware I'm stepping into very, uh, just very sketchy territory here, in my mind, feminism is not about elevating women above men, it's about equality and taking people based on the merits of who they are as people, yeah? Yeah. So, if the male characters are good, it shouldn't matter what gender they are. It would be nice if they're female, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but it shouldn't matter. So this is not a deal breaker, but it gets far, far more depressing. Reason two, posters. Now, I was in Los Angeles fairly recently, and entire buildings were painted to look like the posters of this game. And the four main posters put in every capital city basically depicted, there was one for each of the three male leads, and there was one for this character. Who's this character, you might be thinking? She's not in the game! She, they literally, they've hired a model, Shelby Wellender, I've contacted her, she's lovely, but they contacted a model and they basically created a character specifically for this chestal area right here. And it's incredibly cynical and depressing and it should be transparent, but it did sell a lot of games. That's a reason to be angry about the game. Reason three, the depiction of women in the game. Now, the depiction of women in the game is not great because they're all either shrill harpies, new age housewives, or prostitutes. They jiggle around and bounce and they have nothing to say and you cannot in any way alter the trajectories, their downward trajectories in the story. Reason four, quests that actively shame women. Now, there are quests in the game where you get on the back of a motorbike with a paparazzi, you 
chase down female actresses, shame them for having sex on their own private property, and then profit from that, which is, I really wish there was a bar right here that I could just go over and buy a drink at, but uh, now, let's move on. Uh, it's it's going to get better, I promise. Part six, what will happen if you get online and claim this game or any others are sexist? Now, at this point you're thinking, yeah, the game's sexist. It's sexist. Why don't I get online and say something about it? Well, here's what you're going to experience if that happens. Typical response one, <laughs> that stupid face. This is a game, OMG. Why bring sexism or politics or whatever into it, OMG? Well, first of all, you disgusting, wrinkly bastard. It is a game, but for about 10 years now, we've been trying to get video games recognized as an art form. And when you want something to be considered an art form, you need to start looking at it through the prism of politics and race and gender. And that's how things become art. I've read, literally, again, death threats against Roger Ebert, who claimed over a long period uh, that video games weren't art. And then I went to New York, and I was in MoMA, and I sat there and sat amongst an exhibit of video games as art, and I watched old dudes who hate video games sit there and take them seriously and treat them like art. We are so close to it. This is kind of a personal beef of mine. But these responses are going to get gross. Typical response two, OMG, but seriously, sexism doesn't matter. OK. Well, um, young man, people complain about things that matter to them, yeah? So these people will get online and write hundreds and hundreds of pages on message boards about how graphics aren't good enough, or about how there's not enough downloadable content, or about how you inexplicably can't take your hat off even indoors in Pokemon X and Y. What's that about? But then, that, that's because they care about these things, yeah? Logically, that's because they care about these things. So because they get online and dedicate just as much energy to actively attacking and berating people who claim that games are sexist, logically implies that they are pro-sexism. So just that's something to bear in mind. Aren't people fun? <laughs> Typical response three. OMG, it's satire. Get over it. Men are just as bad as women in the game. OMG, OMG. They say OMG a lot, basically. Uh, first of all, I have consulted a multitude of comedian friends of mine who have all looked at this as satire and said, no, 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 satire is a scalpel. It's not a blunt instrument, and this is not good satire. Secondly, yeah, the women in the game and the men, they're all monsters, right? But the men get something the women don't. They get agency. They get backstories explaining away why they're monsters. They get quests which actively redeem them as human beings, and they come off more like puckish rogues, whereas the women don't move an inch. Now, part seven, how do we respond to these idiots? <laughs> flipping tables really helps, by the way. But what you don't want to do when flipping a table is be sitting across from someone who's flipping one at the same time, because then the table just goes up and down, nothing happens. Uh, the best response to people like this, and the thing you should be saying to game developers if you ever interact with them, is tell me, using diagrams where appropriate, how putting a character, a female character, with amazing agency and grace and poise and depth in your game would in any way impact what you're trying to achieve in the story. And then you just watch them fumble around and suffer a cerebral hemorrhage. Because basically, you can't dispute that. GTA V is a good game, but it would have been great with female characters in there. You know, just women and girls and anything. It would have been absolutely magical. But it's just, it's making me really angry. And the fact is that people are growing up with fictional characters, and people inhale fictional characters at a rate of knots. It's really important for young girls and boys to have fictional role models as well as, you know, real ones. And if they grow up looking at people from, like, from GTA V, they grow up into monsters. But if you grow up, like, there's so many games with amazingly written female characters. Lara Croft in the new Tomb Raider game. Um, Alex Vance from Half-Life 2. I had the maddest crush on her when I was growing up. Um, El Did I get a woo for that? All right, nice. Uh, Ellie from The Last of Us, she's very recent. Uh, Professor Liara Tassoni from Mass Effect. And then people say, okay, how about Princess Zelda? She's a female character, but she's a damsel, so she doesn't count. Wrong, she totally does count. Princess Zelda sits back and manipulates the mute, useless hero around the environment like a chess piece. And when Link can't achieve anything on his own, she dresses up at night as a badass character called Sheik, and then she sneaks out and kills the people he can't deal with, and then comes back. She's basically the Cersei Lannister of video games, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, we're all pretty depressed, but how do we fix this? Yes, that is the Little Rascals. I'll be addressing that in a moment. Here's the thing about that 47%. When you go out and say to gamers, 47% of uh, gamers are women, what you're gonna get is, yeah, but they're not playing real games. You're gonna hear that claim and it's gonna make you angry. Feel free to punch those people in their stupid faces, by the way. But, but 
oh, okay, so what you need to do then is address the fact that, look, Nintendo are very good at uh, being inclusive and getting you know, women and men playing. Uh, mobile gaming and the indie gaming scene, that's where most women are playing their games. That's because for the past decade, these developers and these particular companies have been trying actively to include women. You don't have to exclude them. That's why they're playing them, because the door's open. Try and think of the game development industry as a big clubhouse with boys only written on the front, right? And there's a couple of dudes sitting in the corner, hunkering away, shaking their fists at the stupid smelly girls. You don't smell, by the way. You smell great. Um, and then one of them goes to the bathroom, and he looks out, and suddenly he realizes there's, there's girls in the house. And they've been there for a while, and they've invited their friends in. And suddenly, the air smells fresher, and the architecture's different, and everything just looks and feels nicer, and it's a really positive environment. But a few dudes are still in that corner room, just scowling and pushing girls over and rubbing their faces in the dirt and pulling their hair, which typically is a sign that they're into you, by the way. <laughs> but here's what I'd like to say to those stupid, smelly boys. There are new rules on the clubhouse wall now, and it's time to grow up. Thank you very much.